Should have to find this stupid disc. Don't even know if I'm getting a good shot at changing this thing. Why am I even bothering to film this? I have no idea. Because my channel needs content! Content, damn you! There we go. I don't really use the angle grinder a whole lot. Extremely powerful, but very unwieldy at times. I like control in my in my sanding. Yeah, to do it. You can see angle grinder does do a lot of good when trying to shape the blade but I really just say the blade I'm watching too much forge and fire it really does a lot of good when shaping wood you just got to be real careful not to linger in one spot for too long because then you just start taking out gouges that you really don't want. Overall, though, I have to admit, this looks pretty damn good. Yeah, I'll go ahead and toot my own horn a little bit. Yeah. All right, time to smooth this baby out. Thank <laughs> you. 
All right, so there we have the main axe head shaved down. It really is amazing just how much meat you can carve off a piece of wood with an angle grinder. Really shouldn't use this more often, just learn to control it better. It does wonders, obviously. Uh, you know, with anything else, I might try to get this nice and smoothed out, but because of the nature of this particular weapon, I think I might leave it a little rough on the edge. Maybe just smooth it down, but not try to get it just like like a like a perfectly smooth edge. Maybe I'll maybe I'll get a give it a few few hammer wax, give it that nice forge beaten look. I've seen that done uh, with a couple of different videos. That's it's a pretty cool effect, honestly. I might go with that. Uh, yeah. thing about this one is I only do one clamp for it. So nice and small. Not bad. A little smoothing out. And that should look just fine. Now, if you recall my last video, uh, Excalibur, I attempted to give a bit of a rundown of the show while doing the hand sanding, because it's not the most interesting thing to watch. And unfortunately, I didn't know a whole lot about that show. Uh, still gave me my best shot, though. Fortunately, I do know a great deal about God of War. I've been following this series uh, since it first came out back in 2005. Well, it was a little later than that when I got my hands on it, because I'd never owned a PlayStation until uh, my PlayStation 3. So, I went and bought it for PlayStation 2, and I was able to play it on my roommate's... PlayStation at the time, and honestly, I just fell in love with the game, even with its flaws. I thought it was awesome. Continued it onward, right up until now. God of War 4, it's a great deal different than any of the others. Like, it's still sort of the same hack and slashy mechanics, but it's, it's just built almost completely different uh, game mechanics wise you know plus you have, you have a partner through all of this so attempting not to spoil too much for uh, my kind listeners out there and I'll see if I can give a rundown for you uh, so basically it uh, it starts out with Kratos and his son, he has a son now, uh, named Atreus, uh, who are building a pyre for, uh, for Atreus' mother, Kratos' wife. I forget her name, unfortunately. Uh, but, anyway, building a pyre for her. And, uh, after said funeral, 
they get a visit from someone who is simply called the Stranger starting out. Uh, it's kind of a big twist of who he actually is. I'll just give that away now. It's it's the Norse god Baldr. Uh, now, I like Viking and Norse mythology, uh, but unfortunately I'm not super familiar with who exactly Baldr is other than Odin's son and uh, like the guy who can't be killed. I really don't know what he is the god of. Uh, as, as far as I know, he's the god of mommy issues because he's got him in this game. So he comes knocking at Kratos' door, uh, screaming and yelling about something or other. Apparently, Kratos has something that he wants, but Kratos has no idea what that could possibly be. He doesn't think he has anything. And so he screams, all this screaming and yelling at Kratos' door until Kratos finally comes out and goes, Bro, who are you? What do you want? And, well, Baldur doesn't come out with it at all. He, he just sort of... Stands there, uh, being all like, Oh, look at me! I'm a Greek! I'm super smart, but I don't know what's going on! That's... That's really not, uh, all together, uh, and, like, what he actually did. So... He insults Kratos, to... Which, to Kratos' benefit, he is being really cool about all this. Like, at that first knock, he would have torn this guy in half in previous games. Like, just for the off chance that he might have healing items in him. So he just tells this guy to piss off. But Baldur, he's not having it. He cold cocks and Kratos right across the jaw. And honestly, I am so proud of my boy Kratos at this point. Because he has really grown out of, as a person. He's still just telling this guy to go away. And really keeping his cool. But again, Baldur's not having it. He goes to punch him again. Kratos catches his hand. Blasts him right across the face. He goes down. Now, Baldur, he's not the biggest guy uh, around. He, uh, well, he's he's kind of got that got that Jack Sparrow swagger to him. Except uh, he's he's less into rum and looks like he's more into meth, really. Uh, so he's a very he's a very slight gentleman, and Kratos, uh, well, is not. So. Uh, Baldur obviously goes down after this one swing, and Kratos, he, he's, he's going in to finish him off, because he's about, had about enough of this, I don't really blame him at this point. And in probably the biggest upset in almost all of gaming history, in my opinion, Baldur catches the fist that Kratos throws at him, blasts him, right in the jaw, sends him in the air, spiraling over his house, into the backyard, and straight into probably one of the most fun boss battles I have ever had, personally. Like, Baldur, he, like I said, he can't be killed, so it's, it's not really a fight you're, I guess, supposed to win, but then again, you kind of are, because, like, he's, he's still sort of got a, a health bar, at this point. Uh, but, like, you can do anything you want to this guy. You could blast him through trees, and him spiraling over rocks. It's just so much fun, really. It's just, he's, he's just a human rag doll at this point, and he just keeps coming back for more. But, uh, like, I guess finally, Kratos goes into rage mode, and, uh, he, you know, he, he, you know, manages to snap Baldur's neck and throw him down a ravine, but, uh, I mean, he's, he's like one of the major bosses in this game, so he's not, he's coming back. And, uh, honestly, it only, it only gets crazier from there. You get a, you get a partner who's just ahead, you, you have to fight, like, a whole bunch of dragons, who, curiously enough, don't spit fire, they spit lightning. Is that... Is that common in mythology? Does anybody know? 
comments if if you know anything about dragons spitting lightning in mythology, particularly Norse mythology, since that's where this is based out of. <sighs> Man, I should really start paying attention to this thing. Okay, so I use the core stuff to go ahead and smooth out one of the parts of the blade heads. Get rid of some of the leftover marks there. I'm using the, now. You all know that I'm a purveyor of uh, sandpaper, and honestly, this stuff I, uh, I was recently made aware of, emery cloth, is honestly so much better than any sandpaper I've ever used. It's it's tough, it can, it can take a beating, I can fold it in half and just sand and sand and sand and sand away, and it doesn't, doesn't rip or crack or anything, like it's... This stuff is awesome. I would I would look into this if uh, if you're someone like me who who sits around and sands a lot. All right, so now I can go ahead move on to this buddy. Go ahead smooth out the edges along here. Honestly, probably for the best if I just stick to stick to making the weapons. My explanations aren't nearly as funny when I actually know what I'm talking about. Or hell, maybe they are. Like, comment, and subscribe if, uh, if you like my uh, if you like my little explanations of uh, my mediums. Or like, comment, and subscribe if you don't. YouTube seems to like that sort of thing. So this is kind of neat. I was getting ready to go ahead and drill out the holes to attach the blade uh, part to the shaft when I just just kind of set it here on the on the my little makeshift drill press here and discovered that my angle grinder is at the perfect position. To act as a counter rest to make sure that this thing lies flat. It's nice of what you learn, just randomly in the shop. Okay, so minor setback. I apparently forgot that this little Dremel drill press of mine doesn't actually have a collar big enough to fit anything, but uh, well, this is the largest size drill bit that can fit, and unfortunately, as you can see from my little collection of drill bits here. This is the size that I'm using, and that's the size that I need in order to fit my peg material. So, what I gotta end up doing is using this guy to make a nice straight up and down guide hole, which I will then use my electric drill to make the hole wide enough for the peg material to go into. I gotta get myself a proper drill press. But, this is what I got, and this is what I'm gonna make work. Focus. Focus. Focus, damn you. There we go. Of course, now the camera's in the way of the thing. No, focus it. Focus. Focus.
It was really nice that I had this little line in between where the two boards met. Thanks for a nice little guideline. Um, I had to mark where I had to, I had to put the holes like lengthwise, widthwise. That was already set up for me. I just want things to work out. Okay, one more tiny setback. Because apparently Jesus loves me. This thing is just too big to be able to be drill pressed into there. But, however, not a total setback because I can still use my chair here as a rest and the side of the workbench will make sure this thing stays nice and straight so that I can just go from the side here and just drill downward. This will work! Careful, careful. Patience at all things. Make sure it's right. Looks a little offset, but I think that might be because of the grain structure. At least I hope it is. I really hope it is. Let's find out. All right, so this I think is good. It can go in. Well, okay, hang on. It can go in and out of the holes without too much resistance. It's also not terribly loose either. It's hard to do with a one hand on a camera. Yeah, get in there, get in there. There we go. So yeah, that'll work at least. Let's see how it works with the blade pieces. I'm not gonna lie, I was like 70% sure that this was not gonna work, that these were gonna be super funky and not at all straight, but honestly, with the exception of some wood bowing and warping, this actually turned out pretty damn well. Once I uh, actually glue these and clamp them together, these are gonna be nice and tight. Yes, that will do. And once that's done, I can go ahead and get to work on the epoxy sculpt. Oh, now begins our favorite part, molding the epoxy sculpt. Now, it is kind of easy to forget that the stuff is essentially modeling clay. See what I'm doing here? Yeah. That's one of the joys of doing this on my phone. So, you have to be able to wet it down when you're working it, just to keep it from sticking on you. Hey, baby! Are you I am! That's my way, right there. Just so you don't think I'm howling into the void. Because I have a tendency to do that too. The void is very howlable.
so that is the epoxy sculpt all slathered onto one side using a straight edge I went ahead and smoothed out that top there just would give me a nice surface to work on when I'm putting on all of these lovely little etchings here that are going to go on I may skip these honestly but then again I might not it's hard to I only say that because it's really hard to etch things into into epoxy sculpts considerably more so than uh, than wood which is where these are all going to go into it's a lot of straight lines so it shouldn't be too difficult I don't know I'll decide when I get there yeah